Welcome to a print and play tutorial. Um, this week I have been building Black Sonata. Black Sonata is a solo card game, board game. Um, it's a classic in the genre. It's been around for quite a few years. And it's a one player, 40 and above, 30 minutes. And it's a game that I've been looking at building for a long time. Um, but it's got some interesting quirks. And I thought, well, while I'm building it, I would do a video to show you um, how, how, I've, how I've, I've started to build my version. And there are multiple ways of building games. Um, this is just the way that I've been building this particular game. So Black Sonata is a searching for the dark lady from Shakespeare's sonnets. Um, it has a game that has maps. It's got cards. It's got hidden information. It's got tokens. So, what do you need to think about building these? So, I've collected what I've been using. And here's a little bucket load of, a box load of the things that I've been using that I need to build this print play game. So, let's go through and look at the bits one at a time. So, of course, you're going to have to print it. Uh, first of all, I've printed it in colour. Um, so, colour printer is always a good start. And then we have to build the board. So the board, um, I have printed it, then I have used my Fisker cutter. These things are great. If you haven't got one of those um, and you can print and plate, I strongly recommend them. They have a little line for cutting, um, and you see exactly what I'm going to cut. You've got um, a little razor blade on here. Um, fantastic. So first of all, I cut it out. Then because it's a board and I want it nice and shiny, I've laminated it. So having a laminator is always a good investment as well. This is one I've got. I've got an A3, A4, A3 follows laminator. You put them in, you need laminated sheets. So you also need to purchase something like this. Um, I use 80 GSM. I find that's fine. Um, laminated pouches. So you just put your board in, put it through the laminator. Now, I did a little bit of difference with this one. Um, when I laminated it, I did a double lamination. So I cut it, oh, I did the corners. So you need a corner cutter. So this is a Neo corner cutter, um, and it cuts with small, medium, and large. I've done the corners in large. Um, then I've laminated it, then I've cut it out again. Then I've redone the corners again, and then I've put it through the laminator one last time. The reason for that is it's only single-sided, so I don't have to worry about multi-sided delaminating. Um, but if you just cut it um, and then do the corners, sometimes you get sharp edges. So doing that second lamination through it then remelts the edges, and you end up with a, a much better edge. So that's the board done. Excellent. Um, you also have to do some cards. So there's some standard set of cards that you need to, to um, make. Um, I print single-sided, and then typically I put in a magic card between them. Um, so to do that, you will need some old magic cards or similar cards. You will need some card sleeves. I like the Gangenic ones when I'm doing a game that's um, a bit more, a bit tighter than your penny sleeves, gives it a bit more a nicer feel. Um, I also do spot gluing, that's where the glue comes in. So I spot glue them when I put them in so they don't move around. Um, and yeah, so, and then you get some nice standard. Oh, and you need your corner cutter, of course, because when you cut them out with your cutting device, um, so you cut them out with your cutting device, um, and then you've got to round your corners. Your magic cards will be pre-cornered, um, but your other ones aren't, so that's where you'd use the small. So I've used the larger on the board, the small on the cards, spot glue them, put them in, and then I've got my sleeved cards. And that gets you standard card size. So that was that's fairly easy. Um, you have to do some tokens. Um, I've done another video on doing tokens. Um, so check that out if you want to see the brutal details. But basically, I get these coin cases 
uh, if I get into this one. And I use scissors to cut around the square tokens. And then I have a Fisker hole punch, which I then pop out my, oh, crush, um, my, my circles, which I then spot glue my glue, and then I can throw them in my, uh, get around the right way, in the little coin cases. And that's your tokens done. And they look really good. Move those out of the way so that they can go there. So what's next? Um, oh, then you've got the tricky thing. It's the little cards. So here's here's some here's some raw cards. I haven't quite finished building my build yet, but they come like this um, in the print and play, which is available on Board Game Geek. Um, and the idea with these is that you cut around the edges, you fold them, glue them, and then cut them out as cards. Um, that being said, this game is about um, hidden information and there's a level of deduction, so you don't want to be able to see through the cards. I'm only printing on 80 GSM, so I was a little bit worried about that. So in addition to cutting the cards out, using my favorite cutting tool. Um, I also got some black paper and I made some cards to go in between each side of the mini cards. So basically you get this. Um, this is why I've got one of these because you need to um, measure. So you measure and see that that is 43 millimeters by 60 66 millimeters one thing i've never used my cutter for this cutter for is that it's got all these measurements on it and i've never used it because i've always just cut with this but it hand ended up being very handy for this part of the print and play because you're going to stick your bit of card through if i want it to be i want them to be 60 long uh 63 long and 45 so i can just go to 45 dial up 45 on here and then just run it down and boom got a 45 now if i want to make it six this was a bit trickier so i use this bottom one down here so i can line it up straight um, and i want six i'll put about 66 line it up there and then you go boom and so then you've got a perfect little black card then you will corner it i'm actually using medium corners for my small cards um because i kind of like i like the bigger roundness and because i'm customizing it um i can make it whatever i want that's the joys of print and play um so now you've got a black card and i've made a stack of those um because you need like 50 54 of them um and that then allows you to you need some small sleeves. So these are mini European um, sleeves. And you then spot glue. And you've got a black insert between the two sides that gives you no chance of being able to see through it, which I think is going to be very useful for the game. So that gets you a whole lot of the mini cards but one of the things that's kind of unique about this game is that some of the cards have got these um keyholes and you're looking through those to get information so you actually need to punch them and um, originally i thought i was going to be able to use a standard punch you know, take the bottom off feed it through but some of the cards the holes point of there right in the middle and um if you look at one of these this is my opinion. if you punch that it gets blocked sure you get a nice little hole but it's not going to get you to the middle you, you can't you can't fit it in so i went to office works um, which is in my local station and got one of these so this is a single hole punch 
and allows you to do single holes. And that is absolutely perfect. So if we can say we get this one, I haven't punched it yet, but I have put the black liner in. You can then just, maybe I'll go a bit closer so you can see. Um, you just stick it in, line it up, and gives us a perfect six millimeter hole. Then all I need to do is grab a sleeve, and that will be another card done. Admittedly, it was a bit of a tight fit with this one. Um, this one um, was, it wouldn't fit under the guard very easily. Just get to zoom it in. Um, but the advantage of this particular, so that it wouldn't fit if I just did it under the guard, but the advantage is I could slip it up uh, over the guard and then kind of bend it a little bit and that got me the extra bit of space. So I'm actually over the, rather than under the guard, I'm over the guard, it means you can bend your card and boom, you can easily get the one in the middle. I mean, it's only gonna be good for this size cards and to be fair, I've not used, I've not built a game like this that required me to um, do that. Um, but yeah, there you go, I think I am all done. So lots of different things, neat, play with new toys. Um, there's a great set of instructions that come with the print and play, uh, which I've been using as <laughs> my demo sheet. Yeah, I'm gonna finish it off and then um, at some point, probably do a playthrough video. So that is building Black Sonata. Um, getting to use quite a few of my print and play toys. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe and like.